very welcome to Croke Park. Well, we certainly didn't expect to be here on the second Sunday of October, but here we are for the replay of Mead versus Cork. The first replay in Gaelic football since 1972. Now, remember on that occasion, Offaly beat Kerry. Well, who will it be today? Will it be Mead, the All-Ireland champions? Or will it be Cork, the team who looked for so long the last day as though they were going to pull it off and then were denied by that last second free kick? Well, the atmosphere is building up in Croke Park for this replay this afternoon. I'll have some special guests here in our studio to talk to as the day goes on. But really, I suppose, on the second Sunday of October, you're talking about weather conditions. And who better to talk to us about weather conditions than Enda Colloran, because he's down on the pitch right now. Enda, good day to you. Can you tell us exactly what it's like down there? Very Hello. little breeze, I'm happy to say. Hello, Michael. Well, my first reaction is that the GA must be a very popular organisation with the men above, because... Conditions are almost perfect today for an October day. As you can see, there is little or no wind, not even enough to ruffle the flags on the sideline. And the pitch itself is in fantastic condition considering the heavy rain which we've had all week and considering the bad weather that has cancelled sporting fixtures cross channel, the pitch is in fantastic condition. Some of the players were actually saying that it was hard to uh, whip up the enthusiasm for a replay, but I can tell you when they come out and uh, witness those conditions, they will be delighted because no wind, no rain, very little sun, even though it is uh, about to peep through at the present time. But you could not ask for better conditions on an October day. Now, Ender, you say that the pitch is looking good, and it certainly is from where we are too, but it must be a little bit soft underfoot down there, so it'll be long studs for the players this afternoon. Uh, I thought my, at first I thought it would be, but on closer examination, it's not at all. It's very solid, in fact, and very dry. There must be fantastic drainage here because all the rain that fell during the week, the pitch is still quite solid and ideal, I would say, for football. And uh, finally, from you, perhaps a prediction about how you think it's going to go this afternoon? Well, I'm expecting a very close game. In fact, at full time, we might even have to go into extra time. But I think that Mead, uh, they got the warning the last day and uh, I think they might heed that warning. They have strengthened their team and they might just scrape through today. OK, and uh, thank you very much. We'll be thank talking you, to you later on again. But now let's talk to another man who I'm sure is looking forward to this match this afternoon. That's our big game commentator, Ger Canning. Now, being a Cork man, perhaps he has a vested interest in it, but Ger, of course, has just come back from the Olympic Games in Seoul. Ger, you're welcome back, first Thank of you very all. much indeed, Michael. I'm sure after Can being away... Da. <laughs> I'm sure after being away for uh, almost three weeks now, you've had very little time to even think about this replay. I've had very little sleep as well, but uh, yes, uh, in the last couple of days, I must say, I've thought about it in a, a detailed way, at least as detailed as I possibly can. And uh, the feeling that one had here three weeks ago that Cork more or less threw it away, I think that persists still. And I suppose the big unanswered question is to what extent Meath will raise their game this afternoon and to what extent Cork will allow them to do so. But Ger, you have been talking to people, I'm sure, in Cork about this replay. What's the feeling in Cork? I know after the match, a lot of people felt that Cork threw the uh, drone game away. Now, how do they feel about it going into this replay? Well, there's a lot of confidence still in this Cork team, and I think very little happened in the game three weeks ago to dilute the great confidence that Cork people feel in this team. They also feel they have a super coach in Billy Morgan, a great motivator of men, and as I say, very little happened, they think, three weeks ago to dilute that kind of confidence. And uh, there's plenty of bravado and plenty of confidence as well. But I suppose the unanswered question for me anyway still is, can Meath raise their game? We know they're a super team. We saw them here in the replay of the league back on May the 22nd against Dublin. They're a very good team and I wouldn't rule them out by any means. And they've only lost once in their last 21 games. Quite a statistic. Well, Ger, the answer will come to us in the next hour or two here at Croke Park. Good luck to you in your commentary this afternoon now. A great atmosphere building up and surprisingly early indeed uh, all day here today at Croke Park. Now, I say that because, well, there's been a sort of a low-key build-up to this uh, replay over the past three weeks. And maybe the Olympic Games and all the sport we've seen on television uh, has been part of the reason for that. But certainly watching the crowds coming down to Croke Park today, well, it seems to be even busier outside Croke Park earlier in the, in the day than it was on the day of the drawn match. And uh, I think these supporters are going to enjoy the fair this afternoon, whether their team win, loses, and certainly they can't draw here again this afternoon. OK, now, as I said earlier on, the reason that we're here in Croke Park today is because of that drawn game three weeks ago. It was a pulsating afternoon of football. It had drama, it had excitement, and it had a dramatic finish to it as well, as we will see as we look back on the highlights right now. Line out. 
Now the stands and the terraces here, the customers can be as exuberant as they like. They can really enjoy the occasion, but underneath in the dressing rooms, I'll tell you, it's a very different story indeed. The players, I suppose, may enjoy the All Ireland in retrospect, but right now I doubt if any player can really enjoy things. It's strained and it's tense down there. Some fellows are telling jokes to hollow laughter. Other guys sit quietly in a corner, not saying a thing at all, as though they were going to the gallows. And then you have the fellows who go umpteen times to the loo. Then there's the fellow who ties his boots, unties his boots, ties them again. There's the fellow who sits in the corner until the last minute before he puts on his playing gear. And there's the fellow who probably went to mass this morning in his playing gear. And I always think on an occasion like this, what do you do if you wake up with a headache or a toothache or the makings of a cold? Do you really tell anybody? Do you look for a few different? Or do you grin and bear it and hope for the best that everything will be all right on the day? In many ways, it's the tale of two doctors. Dr. Jerry McEntee on the Meath team. I checked with him, and who better than a doctor to give a diagnosis? He says, look, my dead leg is fine. The rest of the body's alive anyway. And the doctor in Cork, Dr. Con Murphy, he's going around. He assures me, as does Billy Morgan, that everybody's all right there. A lot of people see it really as a battle between those two so accurate men, Larry Tompkins and Brian Stafford. And really today, it could very well come down to that, or to how much Billy Morgan and Sean Boylan, the two coach managers, learned from the drawn game three weeks ago. A game that, that I miss being in Seoul, and I'm glad it was a draw, and I'm glad they fixed it for the day, and I'm glad I'm here. There's a terrific atmosphere. It really is going to be a good one. I'm looking forward to it, Michael. I have no doubt that Jimmy McGee is, and I suspect he's lost a little bit of weight during the Olympics as well. Well now, going on right behind us is the presentation of the uh, trophy for the Junior All-Ireland Final, which was the build-up game, of course, to the Senior Final. And that trophy is being presented right now by the President of the GA, John Dowling, to John McEnroe, the Meath captain. Meath beat London in that final by 110 to 3 points. Uh, John McEnroe, in fact, an interesting player. He was a member of the Meath Senior Team three years ago, the Meath Senior Team that emerged to win the Leinster Finals. Fell foul of the Meath management, had a little bit of falling out with them, but he is back here to captain the junior team this afternoon. Well, now, let me introduce my panel for this afternoon. And first of all, I'm delighted that we have with us Jimmy Barry Murphy from Cork. Now, obviously known to you all as a hurler, but of course, Jimmy was on that Cork team that won the last All-Ireland final back in 1973 and beat Galway in the process as well. How could you even do it, Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> and also with us, we're delighted to have this afternoon Kevin McKay from Tyrone, who's been here on more recent occasion in an All-Ireland final, of course, in 1986 against Kerry. Gentlemen, you're both welcome. And Kevin, I know, looking forward to this match today. Very much so, Michael. Uh, I hope it's the same as last, uh, last game. I enjoy, enjoy toilet. Now, you were here the last day. We were talking about the atmosphere and the build-up. It's every bit as good as the last day. Maybe the sun isn't shining. Maybe it's a little bit colder. But uh, a great sense of anticipation around Coke Park. Very much so. All Ireland fans are always the same. Whether it's a replay or the first game, um, it's great for, for the people of, the, of each, each county. And they want to get behind their team. So uh, we're looking forward to a good game. This is where we are. Well, obviously the Mead supporters are looking forward to it and as the Mead junior team go around the pitch on their lap of honour, uh, Jimmy Barry Murphy, they're getting an incredible cheer all together. Uh, now, you came up from Cork this morning. What's the feeling down there today amongst the supporters coming up to the match? Well, very hopeful, Michael. Um, a lot of people in Cork immediately after the drawn game would have said maybe we left it there. But in hindsight, the team played very well in the day. Just didn't finish the job, but we think we've the players to finish the job today. You were also telling me earlier on that it's raining down at Cork. Now, we're lucky enough here today that it's a nice dry day, a little bit chilly, but you would expect that. But otherwise, the uh, conditions are absolutely perfect for the game. Well, leaving Cork was a terrible morning. It looked like it was going to rain all day. And uh, I must say, from Cork's point of view, I was delighted when I arrived in Dublin to see it was such a dry, fine day. I think it's going to be a little suit our players, and hopefully it'll suit us on today. Jimmy, let's look at this match then. The last day... Cork came out, they really took the game to Meath over the first 15 or 20 minutes. They battled into them in a way that perhaps Meath were a little bit surprised with. Now, I know the feeling is in the Meath camp that they're going to go out today, and if there's hitting to be done, that they're going to be involved in it as well. Uh, any fears that this might be a niggly match? I'd be surprised if the first half an hour isn't a very tough physical game today. To me, watching Meath over the last couple of years, the last day, I was amazed at um, how easy they took the Cork players in the first half. Particularly in their defence was very, very loose, not a bit tight marking like we've come to expect from them. And uh, I think the Cork players are expecting a much tougher physical battle today. But I think we, the players, were able to stand up to that. But um, I'd say Mead will be a very aggressive, you know, tough. They've been very fair side, but it'll be a tough physical battle early on today, I think. Would you agree with that, Kevin? 
um, in, in finals there's always a lot of stake, so I expect for the first 30 minutes or so both teams to mark very, very tight. Maybe if they get a few scores, uh, they'll start to relax and play a little bit of football, at least that's what I hope they'll do. OK, gentlemen, well, we obviously have more to talk about about this final before we expect to see the teams coming out on the pitch. But as the atmosphere and the tension and the expectation builds up here at Croke Park for the start of the match, we're going to take a short commercial break. So join us again in a few moments. Who hope to see Tony Nation take home the new Sam Maguire Cup. And as always, this terrific colour. Once again, the Cork fans have taken up position by and large on the canal end behind the canal goal hoping to see Tony Nation here take home the new Sam Maguire Cup but first of off of course it's a pause for photographs from the usual position down there on the edge of the Hogan stand and we saw Stephen O'Brien there the youngster on the Cork team making his way down there and these Cork players now becoming quite familiar with this particular routine first out of course because they are the challengers despite playing extremely well in the original fixture and let's take a look at the Cork team Cork's only change from the starting lineup of three weeks ago shows the retention of Stephen O'Brien at cornerback in place of Dennis Walsh Larry Tompkins starts at centre forward while other injury doubts concerning Teddy McCarthy and Barry Coffey have cleared sufficiently so the strongest possible 15 will be on duty and included among the six official subs I can tell you is Colm O'Neill and John O'Driscoll so the Cork players then waiting until each and every one of the camera people have had a chance to get the best possible shots. Off they go. Some not quite sure whether the cameramen have finished their duty or not. Others have decided they certainly have. So a chance then to rid a nerve of two as we watch Shay Fahi make his way down. Shay who will be very shortly leaving on army duty to the Lebanon, hoping to take an All-Ireland medal with him. We've watched Stephen O'Brien already, just three days over age for minor, and he's starred as a defender for Cork while playing as a forward for his club, Nemo Rangers. And, of course, the great banner is very imaginative of always. Cork had Jackson Mead for Sams. And there's a royal welcome now and a huge ovation for the defending champions, Joe Castles from the county champions, Nelvin O'Mahony, selected to play and so he has the honour of leading Meade's bid to add the All-Ireland to the league and Leinster titles. Kevin Foley there, one of the last out, and up on Hill 16, once again, it's Meath country. The green and gold flying proudly, and they go for their photograph. Croke Park is like a second home for Meath at this stage, this being their 10th match here in 12 months, and they're unbeaten in any of the previous nine. So let's now take a look at Mead's selection this afternoon. Jerry McEntee has been passed fit to play in midfield alongside Liam Hayes, and they fronted defence with a number of changes, most notably on the left wing, where Terry Ferguson and Colm Coyle come in for Porrick Lyons and Kevin Foley. While up front, Joe Castles plays on the 40, PJ Gillick switches to the left wing, and Matty McCabe drops down to the substitutes. So the Mead selectors then responding to the clamour for change and pinning their hopes on that starting 15. And off they go down towards the goal in front of Hill 16. And there's Mead's number seven, Colm Coyle, just back from Chicago, scorer of three points as a forward so far, so far in the campaign and reverting today to his most familiar role, wing back. Just keeping warm. It's uh, a nippy, crisp afternoon as we watch Barry Coffey here troubled by a slight hamstring injury and he's hoping today in this match for a repeat of the form he demonstrated in the semi-final win against Monaghan. He's the only one of the forwards, by the way, so far yet to score. And meets PJ Gillick switching positions once again today. I think he's got both the talent and the physique to present quite a threat to the Cork rearguard and in particular to his marker this afternoon, who's Tony Davis. And Teddy McCarthy here, who got Cork's goal after just two and a half minutes when the sides last met, giving Cork that tonic start. However, he tended to drift in and out of the match after that, and uh, Cork will be looking for a good deal more consistency from him for the entire 70 minutes. And Liam Hayes, who showed his abiding passion for success in the Meath Colours by opting out of a trip to Seoul to cover the Olympics in order to train for this replay. He was man of the match last year in the final. Tony Nation, 
probably felt with two minutes to go in the draw match that the new Sam Maguire Cup would be his very shortly. And now he has to do it all over again. One of the low-profile players, but here's one of the high-profile players on the Meath team, Robbie O'Malley, the outstanding Meath defender the last day, abiding by the defender's golden principle to get to the ball first and limit the opponent's scope. He's hoping the rest can do that today to try and stifle the talent of people like Paul McGrath here, who showed his outstanding skill as a player, capable of troubling an opponent. Uh, he's a great ball carrier, carries the ball with confidence past opponents and good at setting up scoring opportunities for others. And Terry Ferguson brought back into the mid side this afternoon, took his chance well in the drawn game when coming on in the second half, so a chance for Terry then to add a second All-Ireland medal to his tally. Just caught a glimpse of Jerry McEntee in the background here, and here's one of the most talked about players, of course, Larry Tompkins. After a subdued first half, he really blossomed in, into the game's outstanding star during the original final. Eight points was his final tally, and Cork fans seek another such display this afternoon. Of course, he was in Old Trafford over the last two weeks, getting attention for a hamstring injury. And mention of eight points, well, Brian Stafford got eight as well. His nerve was as steady as ever when he floated over the equalising score into injury time, well into injury time, to record his eighth point of that match. Only one of two Meath players to score on that day, and this is Conor Cunahan, who controlled the centre of uh, Cork's defence with his astute positioning until Joe Castles was introduced during the second half. Today, I wonder whether Joe Castles will be in there to try and draw him out towards the wing and create gaps which Hayes and McEntee may well exploit. Mickey McCullen conceded three goals in the last two matches, but was powerless really to prevent Cork's goal the last day. But he did produce an outstanding save in the second half to keep the Reds at bay. That save made against Dave McCarthy. John Kearns gave an efficient account of himself in the drawn encounter as well, I thought where he received good cover from a very tight-marking defence. He'll be hoping for more of the same today. Coleman Corrigan there just in front of him. The fullback played very steadily against Meade's leading marksman in the original fixture. Though, of course, Brian Stafford did get the decisive last score. So looking around, looking at some of the other players who will be featured in this match. That's the other fullback, Mick Lyons. He'll be hoping to show greater control around the edge of the square today and inspire those around him to do likewise. He certainly can be an inspirational player. Loses the captaincy today because uh, Joe Castles plays. This is Michael McCarthy. Took his point well in the September clash in that first half, but uh, he once again faces the game's top right corner back in Robbie O'Malley this afternoon. Tony Davis there as well, and the match referee, as in the drawn encounter, the match referee is Tommy Sugru from County Kerry. Cork won the toss, by the way, and they will play with a slight breeze in the first half. That is a Colm O'Rourke, Meade's most fluent attacker against Cork last month. Four invaluable points was his final tally, and once again, he'll be marked by Cork's Stephen O'Brien. Stephen O'Brien after 21 and a half minutes of that. Robbie O'Malley's mother, I believe, is in there in the crowd. There she is, and hoping to see her son garner a second All-Ireland medal for the household. And so the Cork players then going down towards the cameraman until somebody reminded them, you've had your photographs taken already, lads. Camera anxious, so <laughs> smiles on the faces and they go off towards the band. And there's Liam Harnan. Looked very commanding in the first half of the drawn game when he limited Larry Tompkins to just one point from a free. And there's Dave Barry, of course, like four of his forward colleagues. He failed to score when the teams last faced one another. And yet he emerges as a much talk about player having a part in the game's last two scores. So once again, you'll see today the various statistics coming up on the different players. And so it's time for the teams then to watch Dini Allen. And the rest of the lads parade behind the Artane Boys Band, part of the pre-match ceremonial, the Munster and the Leinster champions then. led once again by their quietly efficient left out back Tony Nation there the number seven Tony hoping to emulate his club mate and mentor at Nemo Rangers Billy Morgan and bring home the title for the first time since 1973 and 
there's this magnificent scene here on the second Sunday in October and good to report that the crowd looks to be as large as it was here when the sides last met up to around 64,000 today and there we saw a kind of quick glimpse there of Joe Castles leading his lads around Croke Park in front of fanatical supporters, fans who've been forced to dig deep into their pockets again this year for the privilege of getting to see the game at Croke Park and fans whom you can be sure will cheer their teams every step of the way. What a superb sight it is. They come down in front of the Cusick stand. Boys band, so much a part of the big match day here at Croke Park. And their conductor, of course, Joe Lynch, always uh, a very popular figure here. And Joe is from Kells in County Meath, and you can be sure that he will be rooting for the team in green and gold. There's uh, Joe Castles there, like Tony Nation, a friendly, good natured player who made his debut in the Meath colours all of 15 years ago this month when one of his opponents of the Cork team today, Stephen O'Brien, was only three. So it's Cork then with four titles, Mead with four titles in front of 64,000 people ready to renew rivalry. Joe Castles was ready to break away from the parade but the band wanted to go down there towards Hill 16 and why not indeed with uh, all those Mead fans there, here you see them. They certainly made this particular portion of Croke Park their own this year. attendances have never really been as good as the original drawn All-Ireland finals in football but this is certainly going to be an exception this year we estimated around 63,000 at the original match in September and it's certainly up to that this afternoon the last replay in 1972 was 6,000 down on the attendance at the drawn game and while in the past the drop in attendances has varied from being 21,000 down in 1938 and 1943 just being a thousand down in 1937 all of which won't matter a whit to any of these fellows as they play in the most important game of the year for some of them the most important matches in their lives Meath bidding to win a second All-Ireland title back to back and Joe Castles who'll be 34 years of age tomorrow and what a birthday present that would be for him Joe Castles offered a vital presence, I felt, on the 40 for me when most required in the last quarter of the drawn game. And there is Dennis Allen, who says this is going to be his last match, wants to go out with an All-Ireland medal. He confessed disappointment with his form in the drawn match, but still his creative talent was responsible for many of Cork's goals, scores, including, of course, the goal after two and a half minutes. The referee is uh, Tommy Sugru. He's the first Kerry man since Dan Ryan in 1949 to handle the All-Ireland uh, football final. Once again, it's John Goff and Mickey Kearns who will be on the line this afternoon. So just minutes away from the start now on this most Gaelic of Irish sporting occasions. But first, a moment's unity before the commencement of rivalry for our national anthem, our Ron the Vian.
Hope release. Of